Okay. Uh, once again, you guys, thanks a lot for keeping an eye on us. And um, we're enjoying this, believe me. It's a win-win for everybody, looks like. Horses and people and us and everybody. So the horse I'm sitting on is Prieto. And if you saw the video, Three Horses and a Mule, this is the horse I came off the side of the hill with. And um, he just, he wouldn't have a problem running right off the side of the hill. The horses that in Baja are tough. And they're used to that kind of terrain. So it makes for really good trail horses and ranch horses. What I want you to notice today is that we have an opportunity that very, very seldom comes along for me. And what I'm getting at is this is a six-year-old horse coming six. And from the withers forward, he's got a U neck and he has zero collection. But yet he handles pretty darn nice. So what I'm finding out, as it turns out, I've, I've had one other ride, one other disciplined ride on him in my, in my snaffle. So this isn't no big trick. And that's why I waited till now so I could show you the reason why I believe all of this stuff works. So I'm going to ride him around and show you where he's at. And then I'm going to put my snaffle on and show you where he's going. Because uh, this horse is a diamond in the rough. And I'm kind of targeting this video for certain folks because I know where they're at and we communicate. And this is Matt in Idaho and Ben and Shelley in Georgia. Reed in Texas. Josh, who's north of Kansas City, and Ryan, who's working in India right now. So, there you go. You just watch this horse travel and you'll see what I mean. He carries his nose out, which is fine. And for covering country, he's got a nice long stride, and I like that. But what happens is, is that because of the way he's been ridden, he has a tendency to put his nose out. So when you ask for something, there's the response you get. Okay, if you want to turn, you simply turn him, he's always going to take his head like that. Well, what I'm what I'm saying is is that I'm going to be able to reform him and he's going to bridle up beautifully. But I have to do the foundation with the other bit. So, before I grab the other bit, I want to show you something just to reiterate. The reason for a snaffle is you've got a direct pull from here. So you can direct the nose better. The long shank western bit, it's all about the curb strap. So when you pull back on the reins, it tightens on the jaw and the horse responds. Well, this will be the level two. This is where we're headed. But to get here, I've got to get some, some foundation work done. And it's not going to take much at all. i got to tell you, that's why I'm so happy about this horse. So let me change outfits and I'll show you what's going on. All right, now, folks, you already know all about my bit, but I want to share a couple things with you. On a horse like this, he's six years old. He's already been taught to gap at the mouth. So I put a drop nose band on him. Incidentally, it's not cinched down so his eyes pop out. It's just on there so I can help transition him over to a different habit. The reality is, is after he gets on to what I'm teaching him, I'll get rid of this as soon as I can because he won't need it anymore. He won't have to gap because he's not going to get pulled on. But um, what I want to show you is the way the bit's made is just so there's an understanding. This is a horse holding a bit. We talk about him picking up the bit. As you can tell, the curves here in the in the mouthpiece, these are all five and a half inches wide. I made them extra wide for a couple reasons. One of them is, is that when you pull, this actually makes the curve of the jaw with the tongue still underneath it and not being 
pressured on the tongue so much. The other one is, is when I put it back on, I want you to notice the distance that, that you can see the actual mouthpiece on the sides of the skull. That's the part of the pre-signal I want to show you. And for those of you that actually have grass where you live, which we don't, make sure when you're done, you take this and dunk it in the horse tank and then spin it with your hand. And that'll keep that, that grass out. And um, especially in the spring on the East Coast, and that clover gets him horses slobbering like your grandpa. Just make sure that you get these, keep them cleaned out, because if you don't, they'll get gummed up and stop, simply because of the stuff. Now, if they do, just soak them overnight and they'll be fine. For those of you in Wyoming, it's a little late for that, because you're going to have to wait until next spring to be able to dunk something in a horse tank. Unless you got your axe. Just kidding. So now you can see the, the space of the bit showing. And what I want you to watch is this side of the skull when I pull on the rein. And there's a space there before it hits the ring. That's the pre-signal. And that, that gives you one more edge on making a light horse. Oh, and that teaching the horse to stretch again. You hold the reins, push on the saddle horn, whichever foot's back. The left front foot is back. So I'm going to push on the horn and tap on the foot. And when the foot moves, I'll pull on the horn so it'll put its weight on it and won't move. Now I'll pull on the horn and move the other foot. Okay, that's the lesson for the day. That's all you do. If you'll do this every day for two weeks, your horse will stretch all the way out like you're going to pee. So for those of you whose birthday cake looks like a brush fire, it's legal to do this. Now I'm just going to get tracking again. And what I'm after here is three things. It's going to be the muscles have to be built up on this entire neck which they can be done. They've never been built up because nobody ever asked them to. So you physically have to exercise the horse to get that. The second thing is, is that I want to get self-carriage in this bit just to let the horse know what it's like. And then I'll show you later the bit, the type of bit that'll go in his mouth when he goes home. And the height of my hands it's, this is for the nose, this is for this part of the neck, third vertebrae I'm going to call it, and this is for the withers. So that's the three positions I work off of to get collection. Now this is the second time I've used this bit on this horse, but I wanted to share it with you. I'd like you to just watch. Of course, I do it walking backwards because it's, it's faster. Now, my hands are in position too, which is for right here is where I want to bend. That's where the stiffness is. Now, see how I'm giving the rein back and you can hear the cricket because the horse is actually intentionally walking backwards. Now, I'm going to shift down to position one start to get a change now I can explain to the horse what it is that I'm after now the reason I'm so giddy about this horse is because he's what we call teachable he's not bothered and every day he's getting better and uh, he's 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 not at all hard to teach because he is teachable he's just fine with learning anything as long as you never lose your temper or betray him I'm asking him to walk backwards with my skeleton. Horses move their skull and move their body sideways 
because they're they're trying to get away from my hands. Now what I want you to watch is that when it's right, this head stall is going to be hanging right straight down with his head. And that's what I want. It's like to me it's like a pendulum. When that bit hangs in that mouth where it's not forward and it's not back, that's self carriage. And if they can walk that way, forward and or back, that's my quest as a horseman. That's what I want. Now that's in the bosal, the snaffle, the half breed, the spade. And if they'll move off of your skeleton with the bridle in that position, then you're doing pretty nice. There's a the change. Now the weight on my hands is about equal to a grapefruit and then it goes right down to about an apple. Now I'm asking for backwards. He's searching. Now the feet made it and I'm waiting on the skull to make it. And I give it back when he's there and I don't want him over bridling. Now there's this one tiny flash you'll see of him hanging the, the bit perfect in his mouth as far as I'm concerned. There's that one little spot and that's what I'm trying to get my timing well enough to where he'll say got it that's where I'll pack this at because when I pack it there the bits actually in neutral. Now I move my leg back when his hindquarter starts to drift so I can keep him straight. Now he's walking backwards intentionally this is what I mean about teachable. He doesn't have a problem with his mind telling his feet to walk. He's not threatened. He's not bothered. He's not anything. Some horses just brace up and say, hell no. So now, asking, 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 right there. Just before he goes into behind the bit is where I want him. There. Now if a horse can walk backwards, have some level of collection, and roll the cricket, then everything I'm concerned about is taken care of. There's that vertebrae I've been wanting right there. Now there again, this horse is searching for the right thing to do. <sighs> Exhale for stop. Raise him up. Position two. Give it back. Raise him up out of the roll core. There. Raise him up. Raise him up. Raise him up. Now if you'll notice his habit now is going behind the bit instead of sticking his nose out. So all I got to do is be consistent and hang in there and he's going to find that spot where it's in neutral. There's, there's a change. There it is. Okay, for a second there he took a stride on his own and in self-carriage. Now, there's the term collection and self-carriage, which can anybody's book can be whatever definition they want. For me, collection is when a horse gets in the frame so that they're on the hind quarter and more accurate with their front feet. Self-carriage is when you don't have any weight on your hands and the horse is in that frame and carries himself, as in self-carriage. Asking. Up. Moving your feet. There. Right there. Asking. No. Wait on the rain. Search for it. You're fine. Connect the dots and move your feet while you're doing that, if you don't mind. I've got my mirror on the ground over here I can watch. Now one of the reasons I just walk back and forth is because it takes away 
part of the horse having to think of something. After a couple trips, they're like, okay, I got it. That's one thing they don't have to think about. They just walk forward and then start walking backwards. There, there. Okay. When I'm outside, because I, I ride outside most of the time on all these horses, and I think I've mentioned it, but on a two-hour, three-hour ride, I've got ten minutes of schooling going away from the house. When I get back to the place, I'll back him to the tack room, and that gets his mind right and also helps me improve on backing. So I'll be working on leg yields and everything else out there. But now I'm going to walk in a circle because I don't do it till it's perfect. I have a real hard time at the word perfect. I do it till I understand and feel good inside that they've got the concept of what I'm asking for. Then I'll build on that. And this is where this half breed bit comes in for this horse. With all the years of of development that the bit has behind it, the craftsmanship, the reason why it's made the way it's made is going to finish the rest of my quest. In other words, hanging the horse, which I'll do in a minute, and the horse standing there is going to adjust his own skull. So now I'll do it walking forward, and I'm going to ask him to carry himself. So the reason I back up there. The reason I go backwards first is because I don't want it to pull on the mouse so hard. When you put a horse in forward gear, that's what they naturally do. So I, and in the interim of a round pin, I get to work on my legs, my seat bones, my upper torso. Lifting, asking. Lifting, asking. There. Now remember, the weight of the bit... The western bit is going to finish this. So what I'm using is a tool. It's a tool to help me to get to my end result. This horse will not be in this bit for the rest of its life. This is simply a stepping stone to get to a western bit so it can be ridden western. That's a habit. He thinks he needs to do that. When he connects all the dots, as in to my breathing, my skeleton, you're not going to see that nose out. He's going to be comfortable carrying it down. Now, watch. What I've done, you see how his head goes down? This has only been a couple minutes, but what I really want you to appreciate is that I'm literally having him doing curls with weights. His muscles up here, which have never been touched, are now, we're just now whining, and he stuck his head down to stretch him like, wow. So it's going to take a long time, probably a year, to get these muscles built up, and then he'll be just fine. He'll carry himself. So when you see a horse like this, and you think he's just a nosed out dink with a U-neck, believe me, this horse is a really good horse, and is going to be beautiful when he's done. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you. And understand, again, this, when you school in a snaffle, it's not as invasive as a western bit. The western bit is for when they've got all this figured out, and you just simply pick your hand up and they stop. This is a tool for a person that understands the concept of release. A twisted wire snaffle is a weapon for a person that has no concept of anything. Thank you. Okay, folks, now here's the bit. It's a half breed. It's been salted. And I'm, and I'm just going to hang it on this horse every chance I get. So if I don't have a chance to ride him, he'll be standing here holding this bit. And when I get back from riding, I'll put this bit on him. And he's going to start doing his own gymnastics, building up those muscles on the top of his neck. And uh, later on, he's going to start reaching for this bit because of that salt. He'll like it. So that's how I leave it. As you can see, there's no curb strap. No reins. And uh, I get the, the hackamore above, 
so it's not hanging up on it. And I tie the lead rope so that it won't hook under here. And of course there's a bar in case it does. But this is what he'll spend a whole lot of time doing, just standing here. And what will happen is, if you'll look at the side, you can see where it's hanging. Alright, that's, when he raises his head, it's going to hang even better. So he's going to start to raise his head about this high just to get the bit comfortable. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt, but it, it's, the idea is for him to work his own muscles in here. And that's what, it, this bit weighs over a pound and a half, and that's, that's what I call bitting them up. That's not connected to anything. So, he's going to transition to that, and you'll hear the cricket all the way from the house, and he'll start to relax with it and start to move his skull up and down. So that's how, that's, that's how I hang a horse. Thank you.